Hello traders, Tom here with another video. Today we are discussing records. Records not broken since the Great Depression. Let's be real, these numbers are terrible. But when the market is going up in times like this, we need to discuss. Stay tuned. I would like to just thank the trading community for the continued support of this channel. And remember to give this a like if you enjoy the video, comment down below, and of course subscribe and hit that alert if you wanna receive more daily videos about trading. So here we have the non-farm payrolls April jobs report. Every job gained since the Great Recession ended has now been lost officially. And the number is most likely worse than what we're seeing right here. So a couple of points, monthly jobs growth, negative 20.5 million people. Absolutely terrible. Unemployment, 14.7, most likely now above 20% in real figures. And by selection of industry, a huge amount in the leisure and hospitality section, professional and business services, education and health, and of course, transportation and warehousing. So many Americans and many people all over the globe are feeling the pain of this current crisis that we're in. And these numbers are unprecedented. Ever since I've started trading, I've never seen numbers like this. Most people in their trading careers have never seen numbers like this. Not literally since the 1920s into 1930s have we ever seen the numbers this bad. And in this video, we're gonna discuss the current market situation and also our thoughts on what is going to happen in the future and what not to do. So here is the non-farm payroll from forexfactory.com and we can see the level of jobs that are put on in the economy and lost in the economy. And I'm highlighting the GFC period right here. There was a gradual decline followed by an incredibly steep decline heading into early 2009. And many people, of course, are aware of this. In this time, it seems jobless claims is really the now new figure as that is based on administrative data. The jobless claims and current unemployment suggests that the figure is already most likely at least around 20% with over 30 million Americans out of jobs. Even the share of American jobs has been broken in terms of a record. And to put this in a sheer number of, of points, look at how this scale drops off a cliff in terms of jobs put on versus jobs lost. It's just phenomenal. You wanna know the worst thing? The worst thing is this wasn't even what was forecast. It's actually slightly under what was forecast. And therefore the market is actually moving up off this number because of the stimulus that is in the economy right now and the expectations already being so low from a financial standpoint. So here is the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. I bring this up because I want to show the population of employed people ratio. This is taken from 1948 and it's up to 2020, which I'll show you in a minute. And it's for ages of 16 and over. Notice how the percentage of Americans employed has increased over time and the severe decline that happened around the GFC, which was recovering recently. The other thing to note here is, of course, the amount of women moving back into the workforce or, or into the workforce for the first time significantly increased over this time. So to put in perspective what I'm about to show you shows how dire the situation really is. If we move this graph, let's say to 2010 to now and press go, look at what happens. An absolute meteoric drop. And remember before we were seeing 54% participation, we are now approaching 52.5% participation in the workforce. And again, the number is most likely worse than this number that we're seeing here. So what do we think about the situation in terms of the stock market and what's currently happening with the disconnect between unemployment rate and other terrible economic figures and the stock market as a whole in terms of returns. 
This chart, I think, sums up exactly what's going on in the market right now. The key points are that around the time of the Fed announcing their policies, we saw a bottoming of the market with their money flowing into the market over here. Once their money started flowing in, the real stats started showing, and this is during the month of April. So the stats went from being positive to, of course, incredibly negative economic results. At the same time, the Federal Reserve has continued to push money into the stock market and into the economy to basically save what they see as an economic disaster. So the disconnect is real. We have effectively a decoupling from the unemployment results and real life economic figures when compared to what's happening in the stock market. And this graph absolutely sums this up. So what's next? What can we even do about this as investors or traders? Can we potentially take advantage of these markets? Well, I think it's clear that several sectors in the market are going to be untouchable for a period of time. In that first chart, when we're talking about the jobs, we could see where the jobs have been lost. But this particular chart provided by Yardini.com is even better at showing us the different sectors in terms of their recovery recently and in terms of where they're at from a standard of where this crisis began. So underperforming sectors, energy, of course, financials, of course, utilities, surprisingly, real estate, materials, all of these types of things have been underperforming. So many people are aware that, of course, things like information technology are doing much better than others, as healthcare is as well. So the recovery has been pretty significant in these sectors. And I would expect these sectors to already be what I would call overcooked or overinvested in. So what often happens is that when somebody gets onto a good idea, everybody jumps onto that idea. And then you get an over-evaluation coming into earnings. And then that earnings result comes out. It may even beat expectations, but the real price of that share is actually already higher in terms of the expectation versus what even the economists think. And that's why you'll often see price will rise and then it will come straight back down. We saw this with Nintendo recently. Nintendo, great company selling more than ever before, incredible expectations on their sales of their new Switch and game. And then guess what? The result comes out and the stock goes down. So the key to being a good investor over the shorter period is to recognize that the market is often severely overvaluating certain shares and severely undervaluating certain shares. So I think the key moving forward will be to identify sectors that are going to do well and then identify companies that while they have a competitive advantage at the same time, they're not the ones that every single person's looking at. That's not to say that you can't invest in something like an Amazon or an Apple because as we're about to find out, they are worthwhile at some point. So the second biggest thing that you need to do is not give in to FOMO or fear of missing out. If you are thinking of giving into FOMO, and I see a lot of people do this with stocks like Tesla, consider leaving some money on the sidelines. The reason you should do this is because when everything looks good and the herd mentality is looking in a certain direction, you need to be the one that says, okay, is this really worth it? Does this make any logical sense in terms of just that business? If it doesn't make logical sense, you usually get another opportunity to get in. There are some companies that you will miss out using a method like this, but generally speaking, every company comes back at some point. And that leads me on to an example of what I learned over the GFC period. So here is the Apple share. Now, Apple was not actually priced like this. It's because of the split. But realistically, Apple went up, I think, above 200 and something dollars, if memory serves me correctly, during the GFC. And then it came all the way back down. I remember seeing it around $75, $80. And I remember thinking at $75 to $80, wow, this company still has amazing cash flow. They had amazing earnings. They had amazing cash flow. And guess what? They were still growing. So Apple presented amazing value during the GFC period. Now, every stock was presenting great value in history, but Apple was the one that we saw the biggest 
price increase over time. And this is just an example of during the GFC, of course, when tech was in its relative infancy compared to where it is now. But other sectors are going to present very similar ideas. So if we scroll over here and we think about where Apple has gone since then, it's generally been a great company with strong cash flow for a long period. Even during this recent pullback, Apple got down to around just under $220 and then has strongly pulled back up. So it shows you that when you pick a good company during the right time, which again could happen again, there's no doubt it could, you generally get paid off as an investor. So regardless of the unemployment figure, regardless of the fiscal policies, the thing that we're looking at in the market right now is to identify sectors that we're interested in over the long term. And we'll be doing more videos on this on the channel in terms of sector rotations and sector ideas coming in and out of recessions. And we will literally be picking specific companies with great cash flow and relatively low debts. If you can hold a company like that, effectively you are doing what Buffett does, which is holding a company for a long period of time. So if you like this video, make sure to of course give it a like, comment down below and subscribe and hit that bell for more daily videos and interesting content surrounding the financial markets. Happy trading everybody.